In this video, we're going to look at the variable view and some properties. But first, we're going to start out by clicking on File and then Open Data. And then we're going to the EmployeeData.sav file. And if you get this message here, it's, it's talking about the width. So this means the actual width of these columns. And it's specifically about string variables. To the, do you, it says, do you want to set them to the minimum required to hold data? If so, click on No. And this is generally the case that uh, you don't want to click yes there because it could uh, damage the data. In any case, uh, once we have this file opened up, we are going to click on variable view. These, by the way, these tabs that we've been talking about are indeed called views, as you can tell. So we're going to the variable view. And we've already looked at quite a few of these things. Now, one thing we haven't said is that these the name here, which cannot have spaces and can't have special characters, uh, must uh, must not um, repeat. So you can't have ID here and ID here. They must be unique. Each of the variable uh, variables must be unique. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when you look at columns here, you can adjust the width of the column. So if you increase this, it would increase the size of the column. That's the idea there. And also, if you look at val uh, the missing column here, what this means is, you know, let's click on the expansion here. This means that if you if your data is missing a, a response for a given for a given question, for example, if it's a survey, this is going to tell SPSS what the value should be uh, should be in or be considered which value in your data is considered missing, and you can create the the default say there is no missing value or select discrete, which means you could have up to three separate values which represent a value that was missing. So if you had a whole series of negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, that would, SPSS would interpret that as data not um, available was was missing. And then when you go to create your uh, reports or your do your analysis, the results will not include these values by default. There's also a range. So if you have a particular you know range from one to five, if that means there was a missing value, you know, th those, this is, that's the point of the missing values box here. Also note that the align column here is by default set to right. And that is a, um, most often the case, at least for numeric values, but you'll notice with string that that is not necessarily the case that it is left uh, aligned. So that is the align column. And then for the measure column, of course, we looked at this, these are called measures, but then of course they're referred to as in, in more generally in statistical, uh, you know, terms and vocabulary as the levels. And then lastly, we have this role uh, column where input is essentially a reference to an independent variable, as opposed to a target, which is essentially a dependent variable. And the whole point of that is because a role is used for procedures, something called procedures, which essentially are your statistical analyses that you're trying to perform. And those roles are used to select uh, variables for doing some sort of analysis. So if you're opening up one of those dialog boxes, variables that will um, meet some sort of requirement uh, will be automatically displayed in the destination, uh, in some sort of list, essentially. So basically, when you're running your reports, your um, the role will be taken into account when the variables are used to do that analysis. Now, the option here for both means that that particular column, those variables, will be used for both input and target, as opposed to none, which is, of course, neither of those two. And then in the case of partitioning, that refers to partitioning the data into like separate samples for doing, say, training and testing or validation, you know, this, this kind of uh, approach. And then you also have the option of split, which is used for SPSS modeler. And then just as a quick review of independent and dependent, if you look at the st statistics in plain English book here from page 127, you'll see that uh, if you have a sample of men that was watching a TV show and they gave an average rating of 7.5 in terms of enjoyment, or the higher the number, the higher the enjoyment, and the sample of women uh, gave the average rating of 6.5, you can consider that the independent sample was men, so the sample one was men and the sample two was women, and then the independent, 
uh, variable here essentially is men or women, and then the dependent variable is enjoyment. So if you look at probability for dummies, there's an example here. This is a drawing that I made of it. This is roughly on page 50, where the definition of independence uh, is here. So if you have the probability of A given the probability of B, if that's the same thing as the probability of A, then you didn't really need to give it the probability of B at all. And that would be, you know, the test for independence. And in this particular example, it's actually a pretty interesting example, because what they're saying here is, and just before we do this, uh, look at this, ignore this here. Uh, what they're saying is that if you have a die and you roll it and you get a one, a three, or a five, so in other words, we know we got an odd here, what's the probability that you get one? And that's actually pretty straightforward. You know you get one out of three, right? And so that's why you're getting a one-third here as the answer. And that is different. So in other words, because the probability of getting just a one is a one out of six, and the probability of getting one out of one out of these three options here is one-third, these two are not the same. And that means that the test, which we are running here, the test for independence, uh, fails because they uh, they are not independent they are dependent and this so you can see uh, the approach that SPSS is, is is looking at here it's dependence versus independence and anyway this is just a general general statistics slash probability um, thing now knowing that means that when you go back to the variable view here and you look at all of these columns, which uh, you can change all these rows, all these values essentially, which are called properties and also called attributes, what you may not know or realize uh, quickly because it's not very obvious is that you can go up to data and not just set these values through, you know, directly clicking and, and entering information or even through here. You can also go up to data and click on define variable properties. And when you do that, you need to select your variables. In this case, I'm just going to take gender and we'll take, uh, say, education. But notice that for this to work properly or well, it should you should be using nominal or ordinal variables. So you click on continue and then you get a new dialog box that lets you do some things you couldn't otherwise do in the screen behind it. So for example, you can try to automatically label these values with the automatic labels button and then once there's a change made this box here will set uh, will become checked and you can um, and you'll notice too actually the label was filled in not very well but there it is and then you can separately create missing like we could do in the past right over here and then you also um, unlike this screen in the back here this dialog box will show you under gender a count so it gives it gives you a frequency count of unique values right the value of f was 216 and m was 258 if i go to education then look at the counts here so you have one count of negative one 53 counts of eight so you can and then of course you have these roles and pretty much everything you would expect otherwise in the other screen but this is an alternative way to enter properties uh, than simply entering them on this variable view screen.